disconnect from the main pipes. So first I'm going to check round the back. Bottom here, emergency supply. Oxygen and nitrous. Turn them both on. Check we've got back up. Also, happy with that? Turn them off again. You turn them off because when you're using the machine, it will drain the gap, the, the cylinder, before using the pipe work. So if you lose your emergency back up. Next thing we're going to check is the pipe work to this section here. Um, also, the reason I've turned off the gas at the back is to check there's no leak between the gas cylinders and the machine. If there was a leak, these gauges would start dropping, but they're all right. Now, with these anaesthetic machines, other anaesthetic machines, sorry, you check the back, do a back pressure test by including the common gas outlet. You don't do it with these machines, otherwise it inverts the valves inside and renders the machine useless. We use what we call reverse bellows, which basically suck. So what I'm going to do is isolate a switch, which isolates this pipe work from the rest of the machine. Basically, attach that to your auxiliary common gas outlet and start pressing like you need compression. If there's no leak, it should stay depressed. Okay, and then I'm going to open up each of the flow chambers. Sometimes you get a bit of residual gas, so the bulb inflates. Just press it, and squeeze it all out again, and it should stay depressed. Do all three, so that no leak down at all. I'm going to do the vaporizer. Only need to turn it to about one or two percent. And again, a bit of residual gas. If you were to have a leak, no matter how many times you press that, it wouldn't stay depressed. Okay, watch that one again. There we go. Close that off. Hear that? And remember, flip your switch back, otherwise you've got no hard work here. nitrous running and your oxygen is going to drain off your backup cylinders which remember you've turned off. Okay. And this is going to give us our no oxygen flow a lot. I'll drain that off. And in a second. So we've got no oxygen pressure. So round the back Attach your nitrous. So you push it in, make sure it clicks, and do a quick tug test on it to make sure the pipe will fly out again. Look at the front, your gauge says you've got four bars, so you've got the, uh, the uh, wall gas, but more importantly, there's no flow because it's just your nitrous, so that's part of your hypoxic gas. Then put your oxygen back in, and then everything springs into life. So we've got nitrous and oxygen going there, we've got oxygen displaying on the, uh, the pressure gauge. So then, you turn off your oxygen. And again, because you have your uh, hypoxic guard, your nitrous automatically switch off, switch off as well. Next thing I'm going to check, I'm going to calibrate the oxygen sensor. It should be calibrated 21% every day, 100%. Once a week. So on here, down to calibration, option sensor, point on the center. Once that's calibrated, check the suction. Now there's two settings on your suction. There's max, which just keeps sucking and sucking. We've also got control, which you control by your dial here, so you can control the strength. Okay. We've also got oxygen supply for your awake patients if you just want to be a face mask oxygen. The reason that we check 
the calibration of the 12 percent first is because we're breaking the circuit. Because we're breaking the circuit by removing it from there. There we go. So that's calibrated. Reinstall. So sensor back in. Next we're going to check the circuit. So you've got your APL valve, so I'm going to close it all up to 70. With these machines as well, as you get, you turn your valve and it gets to between 30, 1370, it's quite ratcheted. That's a safety thing to put on, just so you know how high you've gone with your APL valve. Okay? So I'm going to inflate the circuit now using a push. Taking just over 40 on your dial. What we're looking for there is that that dial doesn't move in your reservoir back in the down, and also on here it stays quite high. If you have a leak, I don't know if you'll see it there, but your dial will drop. Eventually, you can see it drop on here. I'm just going to turn the APL valve down and just check it corresponds with the dial. 30, 20, off. Next, we're going to check the ventilator. So take your reservoir back off, put it on your angle piece, flip to the ventilator, and basically fill up your circuit using your flush, fill up your reservoir back. Check your settings, this is set 12 breaths per minute, fact time of volume of 500. Usually it takes about 6 breaths to start cheating these time of volumes. This is done with no gas flow, so they're turned off. What we're looking for, main thing is that your bellows are going back to the top. And eventually, if you start achieving this time of volume, Gas flow, a bit of a leak, the gas flow would mask the leak, so eventually the bellows would go back to the top. So always with no flow. Next, I'm going to check. Check the high pressure alarm, so your acute occlusion alarm. So as the bell is down, give you like a squeeze. So that's your high pressure alarm. Next, your disconnection alarm.
Another check you can do is to do with your hypoxic guard, it's called a link 25 test. Your nitrous and your oxygen are set to a ratio of 3 to 1. So you turn your nitrous, take up to 3, oxygen to 1. Make sure that stays there, but more importantly, you can check your oxygen percentage, and that should be between 25 and 30. Seven, so we're going to again, six to two, I should still that same. And lastly, nine to three. If there was a difference, if that was over 30 or below 25, recalibrate the sensor. If it was to do it again, change the sensor. If it's still giving you a wrong reading, the machine needs servicing. Because there's a chain link there, sometimes they can jump on. And then just turn your nitrous off. And I think that's it.